This week on TGC News, Remington's new bolt-action pistol, Brownells and Ed Brown team up to give you a classic and a new way to put trinkets all over your guns. <laughs> Birchwood KC's selection of shooting products is astounding. Whether you're looking for the best targets to zero your gun, or maybe you want to refurbish a forgotten classic, or maybe you just want to slam some steel and have a good time at the range. And don't forget that ear and eye protection. No matter what kind of shooter you are, Birchwood KC has what you need. And because you watch TGC, they're going to help you out with a discount of 10% off your entire order when you use the code TGC10 over at BirchwoodCasey.com. Welcome back to the Gun Collective News, the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about. My name is John Patton. Before we get cracking today, I want to let you guys know that this time around, our giveaway guns for the $5 force on our Patreon page is not one, but two different 12 gauges, a Remington TAC-14 and a Mossberg Shockwave. Two winners this time. Yes, check it out in the link in the video description. Now, the news. Our first story this week is about Remington. If you watch regularly, you know that the Big Green R has become sort of a whipping boy. I'm always making fun of them, and I was ready to lambast them again for this next one. It's called the Remington 700 CP or chassis pistol. I was ready to drop napalm again, just go after them. But then I remembered back to when I talked about the Nosler M48 pistol, and the comments were full of guys telling me they loved the old Remington XP100 and that it was a bigger market than what I realized. I personally think that a bolt-action pistol like this is silly, but I suppose it makes sense when you talk about hunting with a handgun or just having something different at the range. Let's break down the specs, shall we? At its core, it is a standard Remington 700 action, and it will be available in three different calibers, 223, 300 Blackout, and 308. The 223 and Blackout come with a 10 and a half inch barrel, while the 308 comes with a 12 and a half inch, all of which will be threaded. Under that, you'll find the Remington chassis with an attached M-Lock handguard. It also comes with the Remington Xmark Pro trigger. Hopefully you don't drop it and it goes off, LOL. A Magpul Myad grip, a pick rail on top, and a 10 round magazine. Sounds like a decent starting place if you really want to shoot a bolt action pistol. And if you want a bolt action pistol, your options are super limited. Let's skip to everyone's favorite part, the price. How many shekels must you trade to acquire this lead distribution tool? The MSRP is $1,020. The Nosler, the one I mentioned before, comes in at just under $2,500. And by comparison, the Remington is a steal. But the real question here is what do you guys think of this bolt action pistol from Remington? Do they now have enough trust with you to spend your dollars on this or are they still on the struggle bus? Sound off in the comments and let's talk about it. Next up this week is yet another 1911, this time from a brand you may not expect. Brownells, say hello to the BRN 1911. It's a part of their constantly expanding retro lineup, and as you may have guessed, it's a retro styled guns. It's meant to look like the 1911s of the 80s. I'll break down the specs for you guys. It's a classic two tone, five inch barrel, 45 ACP. It's got a carbon steel slide with old school vertical serrations only in the rear, a stainless steel frame. The barrel and front bushing are stainless as well. The rear sight is an adjustable Bomar unit and it has an adjustable trigger. The front strap has 25 lines per inch checkering and the grips are made from Cocobolo, true to form, classic 1911. All of the internals are Ed Brown parts, and that's where things get a little more interesting. All of these Brownells retro 1911s are made by Ed Brown. There's no question in my mind that these will be a great option for people that are really looking for that classic look. However, you better be ready to part with Ed Brown money. Dollar, dollar bills, y'all. The MSRP on this thing, 2,500 bucks. I'm sure people will buy it because it's a very, very nice gun and hand-built 1911s are awesome. But this is now the most expensive item in the retro lineup for Brownells and I don't know if that's a good thing or not. I know we have some 1911 fanboys out there. Tell me what you think. Is Brownells hitting a home run with this thing, partnering with Ed Brown, or is this just gonna be kind of a flop? 
How about some rapid fire news for you guys? There is a new attachment system for M lock slots. It's called M racks and it's by Maxim Defense. Long story short, M racks uses spring loaded captive hardware to attach Picatinny rails to any M lock slot. The other interesting thing is that you can stack them against each other to get a seamless pick rail. Right now, this is just for their Picatinny rails, but I suspect we may see expansion of this concept if it does well. Making stuff simpler and easier to install is always a good thing. Prices range from 40 bucks for the smallest version all the way up to $85 for the I refuse to buy a different handguard version. The October 2018 Knicks checks totals are in, and as it turns out, people still like guns. I created this nifty chart to give you guys a sort of look overarching of how this year has been trending in terms of background checks, and it's interesting to see that March was actually the highest month by a long shot this year. I guess tax returns are really, really a thing. Keep in mind that this doesn't reflect every state out there because some don't report checks in the same way. Either way, though, we love data here at TGC, and if you want to use this, the chart is posted over on the TGC Facebook page. And last but not least, Walther is having a recall on the PPS M2. Apparently, the guns could fire when dropped. They're, of course, calling this an upgrade and saying that it's voluntary on their part because screw taking ownership of the fact that your guns could fire when they're dropped. Sounds a little bit like the SIG 320 debacle. Head over to walther.com slash recall to see if your gun is affected. Keltec offers some of the most interesting and innovative firearms in recent memory. Whether you're into bullpup rifles like the RDB or RFB, or maybe the KSG bullpup shotgun in short or gigantic configuration, or maybe you just want to plink around with some pistol caliber stuff like the Sub 2000 or PF9. They make something affordable for everyone. To learn more, check out KeltechWeapons.com. It's time for more Friendly Fire, the segment where I answer your questions from all over social media. Our question of the week prize pack this week is again brought to you by Pew Pew Tactical, and it's a t-shirt and a 16-inch 5.56 barrel, of course. Link in the description to check out Pew Pew Tactical. Our questions this week are coming from YouTube, and JS says, on an AR platform, is it better to have multiple uppers or multiple dedicated rifles? They're kind of two sides of the same coin. Neither approach is truly better by any real margin. It's more so about your needs. Do you have like a badass lower that you love and don't want to deal with multiple triggers, grips, stocks, all that kind of stuff? Then, then maybe get a bunch of uppers. If you can afford it and are a gun nerd like me, maybe multiple rifles is the ticket. I tend to go the just complete gun approach. Austin Doyle says, what's the best option for home defense, AKA what kind of gun should I use? The reality is that it depends on your living situation and that the ammunition choice is far more important than the gun it comes from. But I think the best choice for most homes is a suppressed handgun. Oh, in the face! Dylan Watkins asks, what can we do to stop or disrupt the attack on gun rights? I've been saying this for a long time. Get out and go be a part of things. Go to rallies, go talk to your government reps, take fence sitters to the range, help pro-gun folks get into office, educate people around your town, around your area. I mean, et cetera, et cetera. It all boils down to getting off your butt. Stop pretending like you can't take a day off of work because I bet less than a tenth of a percent of you guys work seven days a week. Take a day off from work, go on your day off, go be a great representative for gun owners across the nation. And our question of the week and winner of the shirt, facts and 556 barrel this week is Thomas Fisher. He says, what is the biggest challenge facing TGC and how can we as viewers help? Thank you for that question. It's awesome that anyone wants to help. I think the ultimate challenge is time. At the core of things, I am TGC. I have Izzy helping me a massive amount. Adam helps as well. Genevieve is helping. Ben helps a ton, but it all falls on my shoulders. Everything goes through me. If I'm having a bad day or get sick or just need a break, I become the bottleneck to my own business. I'm certainly not complaining because I have the coolest job on earth, but time is a challenge that is ever present. 
I think the other biggest challenge would be the audience. It's important for TGC to be as accurate as possible, as fresh as possible, and constantly be interacting with you guys on every single platform where we post. It's also important that we bring you interesting and entertaining content. You asked how the viewers can help. Well, the short answer is by telling everyone about TGC, spreading the gospel, so to speak. But you guys already do that. Every time you leave a comment or hit like on a video or a social media post or share something we post or even just watching the videos, all that stuff matters. I guess the real answer here is to keep on doing what you do best and being the best audience I could ask for. That's a great question. Be sure to get me your info so I can get you the prize. My friendly fire question to you guys this week. What is the one thing that you want TGC to do that we don't currently do? Post your answer down in the comments. And hey, if you want your question answered right here on The Gun Collective News, send it to me over on theguncollective.com. That is it for this week's show. You guys know the drill. If you didn't like it, hit that button. If you liked it, hit like, get subscribed, and consider supporting us via the links in the video description below. We have an Amazon affiliate store, as well as a place to purchase cool shirts just like this one. And as always, guys, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. Brownell, say hello to the BRN. It scrolled mother. That's not the name of the gun. <laughs> it has an adjustable mother. Doesn't have an adjustable mother. Sorry, does not have that. I'm trying to get it. I'm trying to get it right. Easy. We're gonna get there together, me and you. Where the hell was I? The shirts worn in today's video on the Gun Collective have been provided by Patriot Patch. Closed captions have also been brought to you by Patriot Patch Company. Be sure to click the link in the video description to check out all of their great products, including their cleaning mats.